pick up Katie? Her husband. Who's that ragged? Dog food? Cat food? Big, big cat food? Dog food? The sacks have a little string on them. If you pull it, if you pull it wrong, nothing happens. Though. Just sit there all day long and it. If you find the right string, and sometimes there's a colored string, sometimes it tells you how to do it. A long time ago, it's a string. You just have to figure it out. If you pull it on it right, it just unraveled everything. That's like the Old Testament is. If you look at it and you pull the right string, it just unravels the rest of the Bible. Or it can lock it up. And the Apostle Paul had quite a problem in the book of Galatians. And the, uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews, the book of Ephesians, the book of Romans, these were... Uh, books that were written to correct wrong views of the Bible. Well, back here in Genesis 22 and verse 1 and 2, this is just as like that string that you just pull and it just unravels and everything. And then you can understand it's like walking into a door and opening up a door to giant glorious rooms. You can go off on a side door and get down a dark hallway but this if you do this correctly, you're going to learn the Word of God. You're going to learn what it's talking about. Wyomer. Ha. Na. Eth. Inka. Eth. Yehideka. Asher. Aha. Aha. Ta. Eth. Yes, Chalk. We lack. Lika. El. Eretz. Ha. Ma. Ri. Ya. We ha. Ali ha. Livu, that is. Tu. Sham. Mi. Ola. Al Atad Kiharim Asher Omar Elika. That's a long, long verb. There are a lot of cross references to this one. This, this is like a key verse. This chapter, chapter 22, is like a key chapter in the Bible. If you wanted to put asterisks all over it, you can, you can put uh, uh, that young lady I saw her using a, a, a marker a while ago. Was that, what do you call that? Uh, highlight. You highlight this whole chapter in the Bible. Because this chapter is one of the most outstanding chapters in the whole Word of God. This one here is dynamite. And it's dynamite in Greek and in Hebrew. Wyomer, and he said, and kept on saying... Take now. Take now. Masculine singular call and parody. Take now. Sign of the direct object. And then Inca, his son, his heir. All right, this is his wheels in Greek. And the wheels mean what? It means the absolute heir. This is the heir. This is the firstborn son. The heir. Now, it wasn't really... Uh, Isaac, or Yitzhak, wasn't really his firstborn son, was he? All right, Ishmael was his firstborn son. But he was born of the bondwoman. The Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians tells us, and even in the book of Romans, that the difference between grace and works is like the difference between Isaac and Ishmael. One was the bondwoman, and the other is the heir. Okay, this is the heir talking about the heir, the son. We own Sue is what it says in the Septuagint. Et, all right, and then Yehidika. Yehidika, your only one, your only one, one and only. Yehidika. And now in the Septuagint, it is Agapeton, Agapeton, Agapeton. Agapeton. 
That means beloved. All right. Beloved. All right. And then it also says Aga Pesah. Aga Pesah. I know we're teaching Greek and Hebrew together here. But this is what the Septuagint says. And the Septuagint, the what, their idea of this is very beautiful. How they translated it into Greek is beautiful. Your only beloved, your only beloved, having been loved, which, ahavta, having been loved, right, having been loved. Second mercy, Second, masculine, singular, cow, perfect. The one whom having you have loved. Whom you have loved. Et, yichek. Yichek means what? Let's go back to the root of yichek. 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 Alright? Let's go back and see it. See, it. We, we studied a little bit about this last week, I think. What does, what does yichek mean? Yichek means laughter, doesn't it? But it means a lot more than that, doesn't it? It means a lot more than laughter. It means uh, sexual intimacy. We found that one. That's what it means. Laughter, pleasure. All right? And, and would this boy be the pleasure of his father? Finally. Would he? Yes, he would. All right. This is the one. Itching. All right. Vilek, and go, lika, for yourself. El Eretz, unto a land, unto a land. What does this word Eretz mean? What? Dry land. Into a land, dry land, okay? Dry land. Ha, ma, ha, ma, rima. Ha, maria. All right? The Moriah is what it says. The Moriah. Land of Moriah. Okay? We ha'al lihu. And after him there, shalm there. Shalm means what? It means there. It means place. It means monument. Shalm chan. Okay? Li hola. For a burnt offering. This word here, this is, oh boy. Take your only beloved son, whom you have, for a whole burnt offering. Now just think about a whole burnt offering. What is a whole burnt offering? What entails a whole burnt offering? Huh? You gotta kill it. You kill the offering and you burn it from up. Completely burned up. What he's asking him here now to do is to take his only beloved son and kill him and burn him up. Kill him and burn him up. I want you to think about something about, there's a lot of references. We've got to go look at some references here. But, the God that Abraham knew as Jehovah was and Jehovah, how, what did Jehovah, how did he look upon human sacrifice? Huh? He hated it. He was the testament. Had the pagan nations, had the pagans, had they uh, done human sacrifices? Yeah, yeah all the way from, yeah. from Cain's time. Cain was made the first human sacrifice, basically. Murdered his brother, slew his brother, and butchered him. And God hated it. Think about it. In the, the Valley of Hinnom, the Valley of Hinnom, there was, that was a place where they sacrificed children. And they would have these big bronze statues. And they had arms sticking out. And they would go there, and if something was really bad, if they were sick, if they wanted to cross, their, their, their whole lives were failing or something, they would take one of their children and take the child alive and in these monstrous pagan idols, 
they would build a fire in there where they would just be boiling the hot fire. And they had arms like this. And they would put their child out there and he would dump the child into the flames and burn them up, screaming. God hated that. And he named Gehenon, the valley of Hinnon, Gehenon, the place of hell. God hated it so much. That's what he typified hell is to be. Okay. Now, just go back here to what whole revelation that Abraham had of God. What revelation did he have of God? And, and God called him out. He left the earth of the Chaldees. He, he'd gone. He, he saw that God was not happy with the people in the land, with their human sacrifices and all this. And all of a sudden, it, God, he finally has this child. Then God says he's not going to be the heir. And then he says he's going to have another child, so he has this child, and he, as far as he knows, this is the only child him and Sarah is ever going to have, you know. And Sarah is a Shemite. The first one was a Hamite, the second one's a Shemite, so this one's a, basically a pure Shemite. And now he says, take your son, your beloved son, your only son that you have left. The other one was gone. No, I don't think he even knew what happened to him. His heart was broken. Now he says, take your only son, your only beloved son, and offer him for a burnt offering. In other words, you've got to kill him. You've got to kill him. All upon Ashad won the mountains, Kiharims. Hor is the word for mountain right there. Kiharim, the mountains, okay? Which I shall keep on, or what? Which I shall keep on saying unto you. In other words, I'm going to lead you as you go. I will keep on talking to you as you get there. What kind of reaction would you have? We all think about things. What kind of reaction would you have? Genesis 22 and verse 12 and verse 16 and Genesis 8 and verse 20 John 3, 16 we don't even have to turn there for God so loved the world how much did he love the world? that he did this this very verse right here is John 3, 16 of the Old Testament this is it we have Abraham as a direct type of God the Father this is a direct type of God the Father. Okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 4 and 9. Let's go there real quick. 1 John 4 and 9. And then uh, 2 Chronicles 3 and 1. Hebrews 11. Seventeen through nineteen, Galatians three, six through fourteen, and Galatians two, nineteen and twenty. Exodus thirteen and nineteen and Romans four, one through twenty five. These are all cross references, okay? Cindy, are you over there yet? Yes. Uh first John? Or not? And this the love of God is made manifest, for we are concerned. And that God sent his son, the only begotten and unique son, into the world so that we might live through him. The only beloved. The only begotten. Exactly the same terms. That's in Greek. But in the Septuagint, John knew exactly what the Septuagint said. And this is what the Septuagint says. The only beloved and the only begotten. Just remember that. The only beloved and the only begotten. Now, Second Chronicles 3 and 1. Let's look and see what that says. Second Chronicles 3 and 1. How fast is that little machine? Pretty fast. Anybody over there in Second Chronicles? Are you there? That's pretty fast. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared to David his father in the place that David had appointed on the threshing floor of Ornan of Jesus' site. Okay, this is the very place. This is where it took place. This is going to be where the temple site was. This is a monument, a monumental action right here. Alright? 
And then uh, Joshua 24 and verse 31. Joshua 24 and verse 31. Let's look there for a moment. Joshua 24 and verse 31. Joshua. Joshua means what? Joshua. Jehovah saves. Alright, Jehovah saves. That's the name for Jesus. Actually, Jesus' name is actually Joshua. Alright? Are you who's there? Are you over there, uh, Roger? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, Cindy, are you there? Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and of the elders who outlived Joshua, and had known all the works the Lord had done for Israel. Okay. And someplace down there it also talks about the bones of Joseph. Next verse. Next verse. All right. Go ahead. Um, and the bones of Joseph, which the Israelites brought up out of Egypt, they buried in Shechem in the portion of ground Jacob bought from the sons of Amor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money, and it became the inheritance of the Josephites. All right. They had faith. Now, all of these children that Abraham had never had the real promise. The only land that they really own, and the only land they really own today in the Rams of Jerusalem, according to historical records, is the cave of Machpelah. A burial ground. That's it. That's what they got. They've got a graveyard over there. That's what they really own. They own a graveyard. But Joseph, when he died, or when he was going to die, he said, take my bones out of Egypt. Don't leave them here. Take them over there and bury them in that cave. All right. Romans 4, 1 through 25, we won't read all of that. We're going to go to Hebrews 11, 17 and verse 9 through 19. Hebrews 11. All right, Hebrews 11, chapter. Who is over there? Abe, are you there? Yes. By faith, Abraham, when she was tested, offered... Of Isaac, and he who had received the promise of the of his only begotten son, of whom he was said, and Isaac, your seed will be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received the figure, figurative sense. All right. Now you have to realize that. God believed, or Abraham believed God. And his belief was accounted unto him as righteousness, whether he ever did the act or not. Okay? First of all, this is recorded in the Bible for our edification. When it happened to, to Abraham, Abraham may have been thinking about this. He probably might have been grumbling to himself all the way there. What in the world i am gone for? What am I going to do? What is going to happen here? But he believed God, and he believed that if he, if, he, if he murdered his child, if he slew his child, and burned him up, and he was nothing left of him but ashes, he believed God would resurrect the ashes. Because all God had also said that through that child will all nations be born. So he believed, that's what the book of Hebrews says, that he believed that God, if he killed him, that he would raise him from the dead. And also it says, in another place, that God preached the gospel under Abraham. And he knew the gospel, the good news. The good news about his son. And that son would come through this child. It would come through Isaac. This was going to be the father of the faithful. Okay? This is going to be the father of the faithful. Galatians 3, 6 through 14 talks about faith. The just shall live by faith. In Galatians 2, 19 and 20. Someone go there, Galatians 2, 19 and 20. That's very, very good. The same terms are used in the Greek from the Septuagint here. Are, are, are you there, Roger? We're through the law, I died through the law, so that I'm ready with God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. All right. Go on. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. All right. The Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. 
He loves me. Now, when we say, for God so loved the world, we're talking about the Son, too. He's God. For God so loved the world that He gave Himself and His Son. Now, on the cross of Calvary, who died on the cross of Calvary? Who tasted death? Who physically tasted death on the cross of Calvary? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God. The whole time is God. Tasted death on the cross of Calvary. Who raised Jesus from the dead? Anastasia. The resurrection. Who raised him from the dead? Jesus said, You destroyed this temple in three days. What? I shall raise it up. Another place said, It is the eternal spirit raised him up. Another said, The Father raised the Son. Who raised him? The triune God. Had took effect in our salvation. All right. Those are... 22 and verse 3 now. 22 and verse 3. Anastas. That's the substitute. <laughs> that threw you a little curve, didn't it? I, I knew you were going to be wake up there. Anastas. All right. Day. And it says here in Greek, or in Hebrew, why Yashkim? Avraham. Get roll that R R of a home. Okay? Bob Oker. Alright. What does Bob Oker mean? It's a plow to break through. That's when the light breaks through in the morning, okay? Wayaha Bosh. Hamaro. Wayika. Get. Shani. Ni aro ito we have yishkak lendo. All right. Why? Vaka at ati actually ola why you like el. Ha makom. Asher. Hamer. Lo. Ha Elohim. And he resurrected. That's the word Anasas. Anasasia, that's where it comes from. Look at that. And he rose up. And he rose up Abraham. He rose up early. He rose up early. He stood up again. You lay down at night. Every time you go to bed at night and when you wake up, that's the resurrection. You lay down and you sleep as if you're dead, don't you? Hmm? When you look at somebody, they look like, well, in the funeral home, they look like they're asleep, don't they? But when you wake up, it's an anastasia. It's the resurrection again. Some people don't wake up after they go to sleep. They stay there. When the Bible says they sleep with their fathers, their body sleeps. All right? So our body every night, when we lay down and we go to sleep in the morning, it's the resurrection. A figure of the resurrection. We stand up again. That's beautiful. Isn't it? All right? Wayashkin. And rose up early. Third person, nice and singular. If they are well, consecutive, and perfect. He woke up and stayed up. Avraham. Baboker. In morning, Ba Boker. Ba Boker. Look at that. Ba Boker. Ba on the front of it, bed on the front of it, that means what? That's a preposition in. In the breaking of day is what it literally says. In the plowing forth of the day. Keep that in mind. That's very that's the root of it, okay? Why Yahabosh? And he saddled, he bound around. And kept on bounding around. Third person masculine singular cow well consecutive and perfect. That comes from uh, Chavash. All right, Chavash. Why ya ha bosh? All right. He saddled or he bound around the donkey. The donkey. The donkey. Well, 
And he took and kept on taking Shani to of his uh, professional guides, his young professional guides. All right, me aro, me aro. His young professional guides. It told with him, we have, and and of course, F is is what sign of the direct object. What's the corresponding word in Greek? Ace. Okay, Yishchek, Isaac, the no. Son of him. Why? Vaka. And uh, he he chopped to pieces. He chopped to pieces and splinters. Third person magnet singer. And I'm going to tell you something. When you chop wood, it, it takes effort, doesn't it? P.L. Sim, while consecutive and further. He kept on chopping to pieces. Uh, and in Greek it's Zimon. 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 Part the name Sylvia comes from Zimon. All right, Zimon, which means wood. All right, wood. Ots wood. All right. Uh, Ola for a whole burnt offering. And then it says here, and rose up. And he rose up, and he went. All right, he rose up, and he went unto the place, El Hamakom, unto the place which he had said to him, "Be God, be God." All right, be God. What's that word? The one that I left out? Okay. Wa yikum. Wa yikum. Wa yikum. Uh huh. I write it down myself. Wa yikum. Wa yikum. 22 and verse 4. 22 and verse 4. Ayom Hasha Shilishi. Well, that's something that's Hash Shilishi. Hash Shilishi. Why you saw Avraham. Yet, you know, why yar. Yet, Hamakom. Ner Ra Chuck. Bayo, what does that mean? In day. In day. Ba on the front of it. Bayo, in day. Ha. Hash. Shilashi. The third. Boy. Shilashi. Ha. Shilashi. The third. And uh, kept on lifting up, kept on lifting up Abraham, Abraham, F, in all his eyes. In now, his eyes. Why yar? And he saw, why yar? This is the root of that word down there, why yar? And he saw F, Hamakom, the place, from a distance. All the place from a distance. Now, if you look up that word by yar there on page 200 and, uh, or page 906 and page 1157, you're going to mean, see that it means to see, it means to provide, it means to see to it, all of those things. All right? 22 and verse 5. How does that start out? Wyomer of Rahab. El, ni, ah, ra, shivu, lakam, pe, m, ha 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 ha, Lord. 
That's how my dog get up here. Ha ha, more. Alright. We are ne. We ha na ha. Ne le ka. Ad. Ho. We ne sta we. We na shu ba. Now back over there in 22 and verse 4, when we looked at it, the word the eyes there, it's ophthalmos in Greek, by the way, ophthalmos, the eyes, ophthalmos. And to lift up, it is on a blade sauce, he lift up and saw. All right, these are some of the, the Greek references. And now let's go over here in 22 and verse 5. And he said and kept on seeing Abraham unto his, uh, the little professional guide, young professional guides. Stay here. Stay here. That's imperative. Stay here uh, for yourselves. Stay here for yourselves. Masculine plural cal imperative. Here. Pe. M. With. Ha ha more. With the donkey. With the donkey. Who knew? It's a donkey in heat in Greek, Odo, the donkey. We are me and I and the you. Alright, here's you. And it's Pideon. Pideon. Pideon in Greek. Pideon's what? In Greek, remember? What's a Pideon? Remember, there's quite a few words. Wheel, grateful, make you also. Ideal. What? This is like a teenager. All right. This is one that's in training. This is one that's in seminary. This is one that is in training. All right. Uh, and we shall go. And we shall go. First person corporal plural cal cohorti. It's the aluso meta in Greek. The aluso meta. We shall go. We shall be loose from here. And over there, odd, over and beyond yonder, and we may worship. All right, and we may worship. We nishtawe, we shall worship, and we shall return. First person corporal plural cal cohorti. We shall return, and in that there is faith. We're going to go out there. I'm going to kill this boy. I'm going to burn him up to ashes, and we're going to return. We are going to return. Me and the boy. He believes that he's going to return with his boy. All right? Unto you. Anasteptos prosimos. Anastrepsos. Anastrepsomen. Anastrepsomen. We shall trace our steps backwards. Again. Anastrepsomen. We shall trace our tra steps, first person plural, we shall trace our steps back to you. Alright, so if they're going to come turn, he, he said we're going to come back. We're going and we're coming back. Abraham had no doubt that if he killed that boy, that God was going to raise him. Isn't that beautiful? That man had faith. Sometimes you have faith. Because you see the faith of others, huh? Sometimes we have faith because we see the faith of others. Sometimes people go through trials so that they will, so that other people will see their trials and be able to go through them also. Some people are examples, examples to others. I've said this two or three times, but I want you to remember this. This is one of the greatest examples that I've ever seen. General George Crook gave fewer orders, written orders or anything, than any other general that ever lived. He said examples are better than orders. He led his troops. He went out in front of his troops 
he provided food for them. They'd have beans, they'd have canned this and canned that, and they'd have hardtack, and they'd have jerky. But he provided, tried to provide for his, his uh, troops fresh meat every day when he could. And he traveled out. He was one of the scouts. He scouted for his troops. And his troops loved him. I'm reading the book about him. And uh, there was a historical note in this book that I'm reading. It's down here, the page up here, this part of the page is, is, is Crook's writing, and down below is historical books that, that are quoted about these events where he's going. One time uh, in, in several battles, uh, Sherman, Philip, or uh, Sheridan, that is, Philip Sheridan, uh, came in the area and he went in there for a crook one. And it said the, the troops loved Crook and they believed and they trusted him because he was a man of his word. He said he was as stable as a rock of Gibraltar. He never got excited. I don't care if bullets were flying all around him, like hail was falling, he was said he was a rock. And the men knew that he would be there for them no matter what. He was shot several different times. You know, he, 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 he was wounded. Philip Sheridan, they said, the men didn't quite have the same opinion of him. Sheridan was flighty. He was excitable. And he would change his mind right in the middle of a battle. Crook, when he sat down, he decided what he was going to do, and he did it. No matter what happened, he did it. And they knew exactly where to go and knew exactly what the goal was and that's what we were going to do. And then he said at the end of the Civil War, he said, it's not who wins the battle, but who gets credit for winning the battles. That gets the best job. You know, like the same thing just like politicians are today. Same old story. All right. 22 and verse 6. Why Al Braham, Et Atsi, Ha Ola, Why Ya Sam. See the difference between Shem and Sam there? See that sin instead of the Shem? Modern Yiddish and Hebrew does not make that differentiation. They have two different letters for the Hebrew alphabet, but they pronounce them the same, don't they? How many S's are in Hebrew? Yeah, several S's. And every one of them means something. Shin is shin. You pronounce it S-H. Sin is sin. Sin. And then we have the next. Also, second. All right. And the wood. All you check. But no. Yaki Ka, B Yado, Et, Haish, not Haish, it's Haish. If you look at modern Hebrew, it would be Haish one. All the S's are S's for them. <laughs> All right. Haish, we et. How many T's are there in Hebrew? Several. All right. Yeah. This is F, F, T, H sound. F, all right. Ha, ma, a, kivet. All right, that is a T, H sound at the end, also. Y, ye, le, ku. She, nehem. She, nehem. In modern Hebrew, it's Sinahem. All right. Shinahem. Yada. All right. Why you call? And he took and kept on taking Abraham. Et. Sign of the direct object. Page 84 and 5. If you want to write that down, see it's there. I think I did write it down there. And then Zilah. Zilah. Zilah is wood. All right. Wood for the whole burnt offering. Hola car. Whole seals. The whole burn offering. Wood for the whole burn offering. 
when you're going to burn something up, it takes a lot of wood. So he took a lot of wood, chopped up in small pieces, to make a... When you chop wood up in small pieces, what happens? It makes a hot fire. If you want to make a long burning fire, you put a big piece in there. If you want to make a hot burning fire, you chop it up in little bitty pieces. When you have kindling, you make a real fast fire. Most of my life I've had a wood burning cook stove and a fireplace or a wood stove in my house. And for the wood, for the, for the fireplace, you start out with a little wood to make a hot fire and then you get the big wood started and then you keep putting large logs on it. Okay? In the, in the cook stove, you start out with a little bitty wood and you're going to usually, usually in a cook stove, you, you fire that thing up and you want it to get hot fast because you're waiting. You want something to eat. So you put a lot of little pieces of wood in there, it makes a real hot fire. And then, if you're going to cook for a long time, you put larger pieces in. If you're going to fry food, you got to put some small wood in to keep the fire burning hot. Keep the fire burning hot. Now, in a wood-burning cook stove, you open up, there's an intake and there's a outlet. When you want a hot fire, you open up the outlet all the way and you open up the inlet all the way and you have a lot of air going through there. That's where you get the hot fire and that's exactly what's going on here because this is open. So it's got all the air that he wants. And he's got this little fine wood so he's going to have a blazing hot fire. A lot of times today we don't really see what, why did he chop the wood up fine? Because he's going to have a blazing hot fire to burn that boy's flesh completely up into ashes. Okay? Wood for the burnt offering. ha o the burnt offering. The whole burnt offering. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, you say modern Hebrew. Who uses Hebrew? Well, the Hebrew. The, the Jews use Hebrew in, in Israel. Still. You have to realize now, in church history, people were studying Hebrew all the way back. There's bits and pieces of Hebrew manuscripts. The Jews, until about 1000 A.D., studied the Greek Septuagint. All right? The Greek Septuagint. And then, what it was, up until about 12 or 13, 14, that it was never pronounced. They never pronounced their languages. Now, you have to realize that the Jews, when they went through the festival, they always, they didn't know what they were saying. It was just like Catholics going to... To, to mass and when you're high mass I and mean, it's spoken in, in Latin they don't know what it means but they know they can even say that with the priest because they heard it so many times but they know what they're saying in all reality okay so they had, did have similitude of it but so much of it was what we call Yiddish and when my Hebrew teacher when he was teaching me this he said all the Jews he said they've gone back in the land now they're really proud they say they never lost their language and all that well he said we know it's nonsense <laughs> history tells us different than that yes they did there were Hebrew alphabets and different things back then they would even put their names in Hebrew and, and things like that but they did not use that language for so many years finally the reason why Jews started using their language was why? Again. In a thousand they did. Why did they want to do that? Why did they start wanting to use Hebrew and start wanting to use scrolls again? They hated the Christians so much that they didn't want to be identified with Christians at all and the, and the Christian Bible is written in what language? In Greek. And all the manuscripts basically back then were most of the Christian manuscripts were Greek. And most of the Christian manuscripts were in codex form, weren't they? What's codex? In book form. So the Jews said, let's go back and, and translate our Bible again into Hebrew unless we want to be different than them. And so they did that. And then after that, they, oh, what was about? What, how much, when did they start their, their uh, vows? About six, seven hundred years ago, eight hundred yeah, years ago. Six, 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 yeah, th around thirteen hundred. So they started the route. But Hebrew was never pointed. It was never pointed. I read Hebrew unpointed. 
because that's the way I was taught to read. When I went to <coughs> Israel back in 1975 and 76, I could read the ancient manuscripts because they're not, they're not pointed. On this right here, you can see the old manuscripts. Do, do, do all of you have one of these? I think I'll try to get them all out. If you don't have one, I'll give you one. This is all the, the table of alphabets from ancient Hebrew. Hebrew was not pointed. Jews are very proud people. And they, they, Hebrew language today is more like ancient Hebrew than ever before in history. I want you to know that they're more like it. But still, the grammar is lacking greatly from, from biblical Hebrew grammar. Because when you go to the Jewish Publication Society, and when you see them translating, I don't have it with me today, but we have read some of those translations. How many of you have been here? Some of you haven't been when I've read some of that. Like in Genesis 1 and 1. And when God began to create the heaven, heaven and earth, the word Hashemayim is what? It's plural. Even, even Barashi. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> it's about time. Even Barashi. That is an ancient Hebrew plural. If you look it up in, in, in the modern, it'll say it's singular, but it's plural. It's an ancient lost plural, a Hebrew plural. Uh, the translations that I'm giving you here are translations of the Bible. Most of the Jewish Publication Society is an interpretation of the Hebrew Scriptures. It's not translation. And that's one thing I said when we started this class, we're going to have translations, not interpretation. And we look and we chase those roots. Have you learned some things about the roots? Yeah, I mean, I just couldn't, I, I didn't see where it was in use. Oh, you, Hebrew is in use today. Yeah. They, uh, they're having all, a lot of Christians are going to synagogues and and, and learning all of the feasts and everything else, what the synagogues need to do is come to churches. This is the church age, not the synagogue age. We need to tell them. They're the one missed the boat, not us. We got on the boat. Jesus is the Messiah. They missed him, and they still miss him. They're still missing him to this day. I'm not saying we can't learn something in the feast. I have talked to seven feasts of Israel on Sunday morning. It's been a long time since I've done that. But we went through the seven feasts. And, and I sat down and all that, you know, we go through what they mean and everything else, but I'm going to tell you something. They missed the Messiah. We didn't. This is the church age. This isn't the, isn't the age of Israel. The age of Israel begins in the tribulation period. <laughs> That's pretty rough stuff. Then maybe they will understand what we've been talking about. But the reason why the Jews began to use their Hebrew language again is because they wanted to be different than Christians. They wanted to be different than us. Alright? Where did we finish off? 226? Alright. Let's go back there. Why you call? And he took and kept on taking Abraham, Abraham, at Oxy Wood for the whole burnt offering and he placed upon Isaac, upon the wood. Now all this split up, real fine wood is split up. I mean, there's a big pile of it. Mm -hmm. Now he has tied Isaac up. He's still alive. What do you think Isaac's thinking? <laughs> and he placed the wood upon Isaac. I think he's going to take the wood. He's got all this wood piled on him. Now, he, pretty soon, he's going to be piled up on the wood. He piles the wood on Isaac. Now, he's going to pile the wood up, and then he's going to pile Isaac on top of the wood. All right, poor boys. He's really thinking. I bet his wheels are burning in his head. His son, and he kept on taking, all right, Third person, last and singer, cow, well, consecutive, and perfect. Can you see the Hebrew grammar? The imperfect language, he kept on doing this, he kept on doing this. In his hand, by Yod, by Yadah, it comes from by and Yod, by Yadah, in his hand, 
That, the all on the end of it, that means his hand. Okay? In his hand. Et, Hayish, and the fire, and, sign of direct object, the what? Ha, ma, ha, kide. The slicing knife. The sacrificial knife. This is the knife that he cuts the animal's throat with. And he kept on going. Third person masculine in the plural. And they kept on going. And they kept on going. To Shinahi. Shinahi. Yadol. Together. They kept on going together. John 22 and verse 6 and 19 and verse 17 are cross references to this. Wyomer. Yitchik. El Avram. Avu. Avu, that is. Wyomer. Avi. Wyomer. Ken men me. Vihani. Wyomer. Ken ne. Haish. Here's Paul. Yitchik. Ha ha it seem. Ha ha it seem. And look at this word, we ha it seem, that is. We ha it. Now, in modern Hebrew, that would be we ha it seem. But it's et seem. Sahi is not an S. There's lots of S's in, 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 uh, in Hebrew. All right. But this is a T S. All right. We ha et seen. All right. We are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Ha se. Li o la. All right. This poor boy is beginning to look around. Wyomer. And he kept on saying, Daddy. 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 Isaac kept on saying, kept on saying Isaac unto all for a home. His father, Abi, and he kept on saying, and he said, he kept on saying, Abi, my father, Abi, Abi. Remember on the cross, it, uh, it talks about Jesus calling Abba, his father. Abba, father. And my father, and he said, Behold, my son. And he kept on saying, Behold, the fire. Ha'is, the fire. And the wood. We ha it seen. The wood. And where? He caught on. Where? Ha. Ha se. Where the lamb? For the whole burnt offering. He knows they're going to have a whole burnt offering once. Lots of wood. He's going to burn it up. Itchik knows that they're going to have a whole burnt offering because there's lots of wood. They got the sacrificial knife to slit the lamb, so, but they have no lamb. Where's the lamb? All right, now let's go back and see what Abraham, how he answers him. Jehovah Jireh. The title of Jehovah Jireh is right here. Wyomer. Avraham. Elohim. Yaire, Lo, Hase, Leolot, Bene, Y, Yeliku, Shenehim, Yatok. Okay. And he said, Abraham, Elohim, he shall see to it for himself. He shall see to it for himself. The word see, that word, look at that word there. Page 1157 in Kohler and Bum He shall see, that's the word Yaira. He shall see. His third person master seen or cowed and perfect. He shall keep on seeing for himself. Page 906 in Brown Driver and Gray. Yaira means to see and to see to it, to provide. To see and provide. 
Jehovah Jireh means what? Jehovah shall provide, or Jehovah shall see to it, or Jehovah is seen. Also, it means all those things. Jehovah is seen. Jehovah shall see to it, and Jehovah shall provide. That's the one thing. This is something very beautiful in these verses. He shall see to it for himself, the lamb, for a whole burnt offering, Leolah, for a whole burnt offering, my son. And they went. They walked. They kept on walking. Third person, Matthew, Colonel, Cal, Wild, Consecutive, Perkins, the two, the Shin to him, the two, Yah-Gah together. In the Septuagint, it says, Hothios, Opsete, Hiato, Probaton, Ace, Hola, Bar, Posin. The God, he shall see to it for himself, shall see. They got it pretty right. God shall see to it for himself. He shall see to it. When I was growing up, uh, my family, I, and I still do, I speak a lot of Hokey instead of English. <laughs> okay. And I would ask for something and said, we'll see to it. We'll see to it. We'll see to it. We'll see to it. We'll work, take care of it. We'll provide for that later. But Dakota always used to ask me something, Dad, this, Dad, this. I said, we'll see. We'll see to it. We'll see. All right, we'll provide for it. We'll see to it. Okay. And that's what it is. God shall see to it for himself. Not only God shall see to it for himself, but we're going to see God. Okay. 22 and verse 9. A and B. Vayabu, El, Hamakum, Asher, Amar, Lo, Ha Elohim, Yif Event, Alright, Shab, Avraham, Et, Ha Mez, Alright. Vayah Aruk, Et ha it sin. Why ya a good? Et gitchik. No. Why ya sin? Koto halt ham misbia. Mimma al. Li et sin. <coughs> and they came in together unto the place which Almer has said there basically is the root for the word Wyoming right there Almer okay and uh, on page 55 and page uh, in Brown Driver Breaks and page 65 in Kohler and Bumgardner that's where you're going to find the root of that word what all it means to him the Elohim and he built according to a pattern. He built according to the pattern. This built according to the pattern is the same root as son and even daughter. The note and the name. The note and the name. All right. He built according to a pattern. Now, what what did he build according to a pattern? An altar. An altar. There was a way. Who taught him how to build the altar? God had taught him how to build an altar all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Way back when they had the first one. Built according to a pattern. There, Abraham, the altar. And arranged the wood. He arranged the wood so it would, uh, remember this is Zilah, Zilah, wood. And he bowed, and he bowed and kept on binding up. He bound hand and foot. Seen Podi sauce. He bound hand and foot. Isaac, his son. Isaac, his son. And he placed him upon Ha Mizbiah 
the sacrificial offering. The sacrificial offering. Now, what do you think Isaac's thinking about all this? Daddy, you lied to me. You didn't tell me the truth. Mend me all. From above to the wood. Now he binds him on top and he binds him to the wood. He ties him all together. And he's still alive. He's still alive. Alright. Is it told we own out told ep they can out told epi told the saw saw perion epano ton zilon. Isaac, the heir of him, he placed him upon the sacrificial altar above the wood. That's what it says in the Septuagint. Are you, are you enjoying the Septuagint's version of this also? Because I want you to see that actually the Septuagint in all reality is over in the Hebrew Bible. All right. Now, we, since 19... 48 or so, we have the, the Dead Sea Scrolls would go back, but we haven't heard a, lot, a whole lot about that, have we? You can buy, uh, I think it is, a scroll of Isaiah now and different parts of that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I taught a class on the Dead Sea Scrolls here one time. I think there was eight classes or something like that, I thought. You, you can go to the website. They're still up there, aren't they, Randall? On the old website? The Dead Sea Scrolls. I think you can go up there and listen to the class I taught on the Dead Sea Scrolls. How do you say Isaac in Greek? Isaac, his sack, his sack, his sack. His sack, yeah. That's it, in Greek. His sack. All right. His sack. His sack. Isaac told we all now to epi they can out tone epi to the asos perion epano tone zelo. He placed the heir of him, and he uses the word heir right there, but we don't. The heir of him upon the wood pot. Alright, 22 and verse 10. We'll quit here with this verse. Is that alright? I know we're quitting right in the middle of a thought, but we can't go much further. Alright? Why, Yishla, Abraham, Et, Yado, Why, Yika, Et, Ha, Ma, Ha, this chop yes no all right and he stretched out way out his hand he kept on stretching out his hand in the action here I think that he he just kept holding his hand out there and he couldn't make the slice where he would cut his throat he just kept on holding his hand out there from what the Hebrew action shows he just kept on holding his hand out there and just looking probably in his son's eyes realizing that he was going to cause him that boy's probably bawling his head off and Abraham's bawling and Abraham and the baby's bawling and he's going to do this he's going to do it but he's and he's going to do it okay that's the end I mean he's going to do this God knew Abraham would do it we asked him Abraham didn't know what he could or not, but God knew he would. And he's out there with his hands, ready to slice his, his, it said, outstretch Abraham's hand. And he took the knife to slay. Cal infinity calls it Lish chok. To slay at his son. It says in, in the Septuagint, sustain ma chiron. That's a short, short sword. Foxe. Foxe. To slay, tone, we own, how To slay the son of him. To say, foxe. That means to slay, to slaughter. He reached his hand out, his kere, kera his hands out to slay his son. Previews are coming to practice. That's it. That's it for tonight. We'll start there next week. 22 verse 11.
Uh, we're leaving right there like they used to do in the old cowboy movies. The guy's falling off the cliff. Commercial break. Yeah, commercial break. Next week, be back next Saturday. <laughs> Not next Saturday, but Sunday. What is the date? The 27th? Yeah. All right. I write down the date on these things. I go back in some of my old Greek and Hebrew stuff and see it was 30 and 40 years ago. I try to go back and remember, well, where was I when I thought that? We don't have to remember if praise is I'm, I'm working. Cindy, I'm in the 40th chapter. All right, in verse 15. Well, not nine. Only nine in part of one. <laughs> but I'm only third pass right now. You have to realize that when I'm going through, I write the Hebrew first. And I go back and I write the English translation. And I have the grammar in my mind. Sometimes I write the grammar down, sometimes I don't. But I just want to get the first line down. I'm going to put the Hebrew down, and then I'm going to put the English translation under. And then I go back and I write the pronunciation of all of them. Then the next pass, number four pass, I go back and write all of the grammar and the page numbers in it. Along with the Septuagint translation or whatever else that I want to throw in there and the cross references. So, boy, I mean, that takes a lot of work. But it's worth it. It's, it's worth it. It is worth it. Now, if you do that, in all the Greek New Testament, and all the Hebrew Old Testament, by the time you get through several of those books, you will know that language. <laughs> you will learn by doing it. We will learn by what? All right. By what? Immersion. By, by doing it. You will learn by doing it. And I think that's probably one of the best ways. Because you, especially if you write down the roots of all of it, write down the roots of those words. Wyomer, third person, masculine singular, how, well, consecutive, and perfect. What is the root of that? Amen. Okay. You do all of that, and, you, and you'll learn page 55 in Brown Driver Breaks, page 65 in Cobra and Bumbo. F, page 84 in, in Brown Driver Breaks. Sign of the direct copy. The equivalent of that is ace. So you get these things. You get them. And when you got that down there, I remember when, when Ken Glenn went back to the Louisville, Kentucky Seminary and he started spouting all the grammatical rules his teachers didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> Just like that. He said, there's baby Greek back here. You're learning advanced reading and research, people. From the start. <laughs> and are you getting your feet wet in it? You've had some Hebrew. And it's kind of helped you follow it a little bit. Uh, and and then you get into the real Hebrew, this Hebrew. Oh, I mean, to tell you, it explodes. You just, it explodes into what the meaning is on. I hope it means something to you. Well, let's go out and do something eternal. Do something eternal. Uh, Brother Don, would you dismiss us in prayer, please, brother? Dear Lord, if we just come to you and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come there and study your word, Lord. And just, we hope that we would understand it and help it to apply it to our lives, Lord. And uh, we just thank you each and every day, Lord, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember, I keep referring back to the Septuagint because the Septuagint is the oldest form of the Hebrew Bible we actually have other than the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's why it's so important, because they translated all the translations and, and all the Bibles from what? Is that good? Right. <laughs> so it's very important. Boy, I turned that one over, didn't I?